Welcome to My Power International Rectifier's Power Design Site. In this video, we will provide an overview of the basic features and functionality of IR's SuperBuck Online Design Center. If the user does not have an account, they need to select Register and provide the necessary information. If they are registered, they need to put their username in, which is typically their email, and type in their password. Once logged in, the user will be brought to the part selection page where the design parameters of input voltage, output voltage, output current, and switching frequency will be used to filter the parts. I'll select the part. We still have a large selection here, so I can further refine my search through the protection features or the functionality features. Here I will select an integrated 12 volt bias LDO. The selection resulted in far fewer parts and I want to design the IR3897. The user is now in the electrical design page and a fully designed schematic is before them. From here, they have the ability to run simulations, view results, edit component values, and also configure the analysis settings. I will run a steady state analysis. Once the simulation is finished, a window will open the waveform viewer where I can further analyze the simulation results. The simulation was successful. Within the waveform viewer, you can see several, several waveforms. Here I will select all, which superimposes all of them. I have full zooming capability, and I can make many other measurements. Let's say I wanted to determine what the switching frequency was. I would move the cursors to one cycle. Here's the period here. I would go to 1 over delta T and I've got 593 kilohertz. Returning to the schematic, say I want to change my load step from 1 to 5 amps. In the upper left hand corner there's a wrench that allows me to adjust the configuration settings. I can change the frequency span and the transient analysis time. I want to change that to 0.2 milliseconds. Now I will run a transient analysis. While the transient analysis is running, you'll notice that there are tabs on the side, design, schematic, waveform, and losses. Design allows you to redesign. Schematic is what we've been in. Waveforms shows all the waveforms that we, we, we have performed. And losses will show the power losses. The simulation was successful. Here's the window. And let's look at the output current. You see it goes from 1 to 5 amps. And you see that the simulation time was 0.2 milliseconds. Keep in mind that the user has the ability to change any of the components to custom values. The schematic is fully interactive and changes to the schematic will affect the simulation results. The losses tab shows power loss calculated values for some of the critical power loss components. Here we have the uh, internal FETs, input and output capacitors, and the inductor. In the design tab, 
the user has the option to redesign using more advanced design parameters such as output voltage ripple or inductor ripple current. For instance, if I want to tighten up the inductor ripple current, I could enter a value of, let's say, 10% and design the part that says I will overwrite the existing design. The reference design, the schematics recalculated, a component has changed. The inductor is now 10 microhenries. The next step in the design is the PCB design. Here I can view the current components that would be available on the demo board. I have the option to move my components around and also the ability to place new components. Here I will add a new component, call it test. It's got the thermal resistance, which I can change, and the power. I will add that and move it onto the board. I also have the option to adjust my PC board. I could add another layer or change the copper thickness. Once I'm satisfied with the board, I proceed to the thermal analysis. Here I can set air temperature, air speed, and direction. The components highlighted have power loss associated with them. Once I'm happy with the thermal settings, I can simulate. When the simulation is finished, I can view my results, both the top and bottom sides of the board, along with the calculated temperatures of each component. Here's the top and bottom of the board. Here's a thermometer temperature showing the different hot spots. You can see the airflow is from left to right. And here's the calculated power dissipation for each of the components. The summary page contains an overview of each of the design steps I have covered so far. The user can see which inputs were used the schematic, bill of materials, simulation results, board definition, efficiency, power losses, thermal results, they can also get a PDF output of the summary and can get an Excel spreadsheet of the bomb. Once I've finished the design, I can save the design. Here's the design manager. I can give the design a name. Design three is fine. You'll notice that when I saved it, that little exclamation point went away. I also have the option to share my design with other users. I can send an invite to a specific user by selecting the share button, put an email in, provide assign read-write privileges. The user will be required to create an account in the tool if they're not already a registered user. I would send the invite. Selecting the More button gives the user a few more options for sharing and accessing designs. Finally, the last topic I want to bring up is the Feedback button. There should be a feedback button located on every one of Transom's tools. We would love to hear from you on how to improve these tools. Please use the feedback button and let us know your thoughts.